literally the last power of the day of this tournament. And this tree just holds a ton of fish and they're all big. Today I'm going to walk through how crappie transition specifically on reservoir systems. I'm going to use Watts Bar Lake as kind of the example map. I fished the big crappie bash tournament which was sponsored by ACC Crappie Sticks and Crappie Cove. And uh, well, I caught some big ones towards the end, but first I'm just going to walk through how crappie move throughout a big reservoir system, specifically in a highland reservoir like Watts Bar Lake, uh, how you can find them during different times of the year. And then I'm gonna walk through my process of actually going about fishing that tournament. So typically when I start taking my spring trips down south, I usually start taking those trips somewhere between mid to late February. Uh, and that's a late winter, early pre-spawn bite. On a big reservoir system, specifically like Watts Bar Lake, I'm expecting those crappie to be on the mouths of those feeder creeks. And Watts Bar Lake's got a ton of different little feeder creeks going into it. The way I'd go about actually finding which feeder creek held fish, just simply by using side imaging. I was actually fishing Enid Lake during late February this spring, or this earlier this year, and side imaging for these bigger suspended crappie was just a great way to find out if there's actually fish in that feeder creek. If there's not, just move to the next one. Um, but that is the high percentage spot that these crappie are gonna be in that late winter, early pre-spawn, and even to the middle part of the pre-spawn phase. Now for a place like Watts Bar Lake, the typical late winter, early pre-spawn or even mid pre-spawn is probably gonna be somewhere in that March time frame. Uh, the further north you go, it's actually gonna get pushed later in the year. For us in Wisconsin, I'm on the Mississippi River right now filming this. Uh, typically our pre-spawn is April and our May is when our spawning month is. If you're in Texas, probably gonna be February time frame is your late winter, early pre-spawn phase. So searching the mouths of a bunch of different feeder creeks, that's gonna give you the highest probability of finding crappie. So as you get further into the spawning cycle, let's say mid pre-spawn to that first wave of spawners, you're gonna to wanna to basically move shallower from where you found them in that pre-spawn phase. So if we got a feeder creek here, um, let's say I was finding them in 25 feet of water, I'm actually not gonna go far back into the creek. I'm gonna look for shallow spots that have pieces of cover uh, right at the mouth of the creek or maybe you know a couple hundred yards in. I'm not gonna go all the way back to the, to the back of the creek just yet. Uh, if there's docks, it's always a good spot. If you have vertical timber, maybe there's some brush piles, scan around with side imaging. That's where you're gonna find the highest percentage or highest concentration of crappie during that mid pre-spawn right up until that first wave of spawners gets up shallow. As you get into the spawning cycle, where now you get multiple waves of crappie pushing up shallow to do their spawning, in Tennessee, typically it's like mid-April is when they start spawning. Um, when I was there fishing the tournament, they were very late, caught a lot of pre-spawn fish, but typically mid-April on Watts Bar Lake, they'll start pushing shallow. And that's when you can push in to the back of these feeder creeks um, look for these fish in less than 10 feet of water, whether they're on stumps. Some of them are just going to be suspended. Some of the bigger females that maybe just aren't on beds yet, they're just suspended in less than 10 feet of water, just kind of cruising around. Um, again, side imaging is a great tool, even in that less than 10 foot of water to find them. For the tournament that I fished, uh, I actually was under the assumption that most of these fish were going to be post-spawn because the tournament was right at the tail end of April, I think getting into the first week of May there. And typically on Watts Bar Lake, those fish are pretty much spawned out. There might be one or two more waves of spawning fish, but most of them are spawned out. They've pushed off their beds. They're basically where they're gonna be uh, during that middle pre-spawn phase. So wherever you found them um, in Tennessee, let's say if you found them in early April, it's probably the same spot you're going to find them that first week of May, second week of May. So when I was actually looking for some of these fish using side imaging, um, I actually tried going shallow and there were a few fish up there, but they just weren't big. There weren't anything of any big size uh, to win money for this tournament. Uh, so I actually went out deep and found some deeper brush piles, or I should say lay down some deeper stumps um, that did hold some bigger fish and the fish I did catch I caught a two pounder, I think the very first day I was there, um, and it had eggs. I mean, it was full of eggs, hadn't spawned out yet. Even up north here in Wisconsin, I think our spawning season was pushed back a little bit. The other thing you have to take into account, even though crappie are kind of moving throughout the, the spring transition time frame, 
the weather pattern can affect them greatly. So if you get a, a rainstorm, and you, the bite was great before, you get a rainstorm and now you got a high pressure system, you'll just watch those crappie that may have been suspended way up in the water column that were hitting a lot of jigs. They're gonna start sinking right down to the bottom, bury themselves into some brush, and they may not want you know, a jig or a minnow or anything. Um, you just kind of got to wait for the pressure to change to really have that bite turn back on. You can keep casting little hair jigs at them, but typically you need some sort of pressure change to, to actually get them to bite. So the two scout days before the tournament or the practice days, um, I didn't find a ton of big fish. I thought I found a couple spots that held potentially two plus pounders. Uh, but then Friday morning, which was the day before the tournament, it just started raining. And uh, even though you might be able to dial them, these crappie in throughout the transition from pre-spawn to spawn to post-spawn, when you get a weather when you get a weather front move in, uh, that can change a lot of things. So what happened was Friday just downpoured for basically half the day. I actually tried to go out there and catch some fish. I caught a few uh, in the rain. Definitely wasn't fun. Woke up Saturday morning, it was dead calm, but the problem was we started to get this high pressure system. And throughout the day, you could notice that even early in the morning, there were some crappie suspended way up in the water column. You know, they were in 20 feet of water and then they were suspended two, three feet below the surface. Uh, big pre-spawn fish and all of a sudden they started sinking uh, kind of throughout the day. First, like four or five hours of the tournament was actually a pretty big struggle for me. I think I managed to catch one or two decent sized fish and for that tournament I know you got to basically catch a two pounder to weigh in each hour in order to win some sort of money. Um, I think I caught a pound and three quarter, pound and a half, something like that, weighed that one in. Uh, but towards the end of the day the weather started to turn, the wind picked up, pressure changed and I managed to just, I was just side imaging a section of water right on the mouth of a feeder creek that I hadn't fished before, and I noticed on side imaging there was a big stump, a big, I don't know, it was probably like 10, 12 feet, just a stump of a tree, and it looked like it had some fish on it. So I kind of anchored up or spot locked up, made my first cast in there, and this is what the tree looked like on live scope. It was loaded with massive crappie. I mean, I've never run across a tree that was loaded with pound and three quarter to two plus pound fish. As many fish that I saw on this live scope. Um, I think I caught like five or six. I had one break off that probably was a well over two pounds. Um, but the very last fish that I did catch ended up being, uh, I think on my scale, it was like two pounds, one ounce. I did weigh it in at the tournament. Like two it was 2.05 yeah, uh, pounds. Unfortunately, it did not win the hour. Uh, Matt Zenas from Wired for Crappie. He actually won That's it with 2.12 pounds. It's going to be uh, close. But I guess going back through the game plan of, I originally I thought these fish would be spawning way up shallow. Side image up there, I didn't really find a ton of fish, at least not a ton of big fish. So I pushed back out to deeper water thinking, okay, maybe they're already in post-spawn mode, which is basically where they're going to be in that pre-spawn cycle. Um, I was fortunate enough to find some big standing timber and, uh, that held some fish. Unfortunately, the kind of weather pattern threw me for a loop there for the most part of the tournament day, but uh, just went back to the game plan. Just started side scanning in the mouth of those feeder creeks and slowly push in uh, towards shallow water until you basically find some. And if you can't find them in one feeder creek, just go to the next one. You know, it's a uh, fishing a big reservoir system, you're going to be idling a lot and you're going to be using side imaging. This, that's why side imaging is so important on those big reservoir systems because you're going to be scanning a lot. And uh, that's all I did. Ended up finding this nice big tree, caught some big crappie off it. Um, as far as tackle went, this is the only thing I was pretty much using. Seven foot one piece that ACC has. This is the uh, 2000 size Viper X reel by PC Fun. Six pound mono with a eighth ounce jig head and then the crappie monster, uh, monster milk small fry pattern. But yeah, six pound mono. I probably could have gone with braid. Typically when I travel down south, usually you can get away with eight or 10 pound braid. Um, but for whatever reason, they seemed a little spooky. So I just stuck, kept sticking with this six pound and a one eighth ounce jig head. And I caught pretty much all my fish on this rod right here.
So that's how crappie kind of transition throughout a reservoir. We start late winter, early pre-spawn. They're gonna be on the mouths of those feeder creeks as you get into the middle part of pre-spawn, that first wave of spawners. I would start searching the shallow parts that are close to the mouth of that feeder creek. If you can find any cover, uh, docks, vertical timber, brush piles, even, even rock piles or some sort of seawall or something. Um, that's where kind of the first wave of crappie are gonna push shallow. And then as you get into the main part of the spawning phase, keep going back into that feeder creek, that's when they'll push way shallow. Typically that time of year, water levels are gonna come way up. Um, so there's, there's plenty of room for them to go way back in the back parts of those feeder creeks. If they were shallow, I'd probably go with just a bobber and jig setup. Um, I, I, I probably might use this rod still, but uh, I'd probably go with like my seven and a half or eight foot with a bobber and jig setup and just kind of cast around, you know, in two to five feet of water. They might be a little bit deeper during their main spawning cycle. It really depends on how much that water fluctuates on the reservoir that you're fishing. But then as you get into post-spawn, just kind of reverse the whole cycle. Those fish are gonna start pushing back out, um, kind of check the shallow parts nearest to the feeder creek. And then once I get into the kind of the summer period, they're just gonna hang out in the middle of that feeder creek, it seems like. Uh, some of them are gonna hold to the deeper brush piles. Some of them are just gonna suspend and be roaming crappie. But uh, that's, that's basically the game plan I always have when I go down to any reservoir system in the Mid-South or even you know, Tennessee area. This game plan and the knowledge of just understanding how crappie move through a reservoir system provides me with some confidence when I travel over a thousand miles to fish some of these reservoir systems. And uh, just understand it, it might take some time. You might have to fish three or four or 10 different feeder creeks until you find some fish. Uh, but once you find them, hopefully you can find some big ones and uh, kind of figure out a pattern and start, you know, looking at a map and say, okay, I found them in this feeder creek We'll find a different feeder creek that's very similar to that setup. And hopefully you can put a ton of crappie in the live well on your next fishing trip. So appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section down below. Good luck on the water this season.